Welcome back, everyone. The long-drawn battle between Governor Godwin Obaseki and his now former deputy, Philip Shaibu, has come to a staggering impeachment of Philip Shaibu. A seven-man panel headed by Justice S.A. Omonua found the former deputy governor guilty on two cases and one recommendation. Tonight, to help us make sense of the issues, I am now being joined by our guest, Dr. Kwebao, a lawyer and public affairs analyst. Um, he joins us virtually. Thank you for joining us tonight. How are you doing? Thank um, you so much for having me. Thank you. And let's begin. So in, in this particular conversation, you are going to be wearing two hearts. You are a lawyer, so we'll look at the legal perspective of this. But you're also a, poli a public affairs analyst, so you're also going to touch on the politics of this. And I want to begin with the politics of this. Um, let's look at the political history and relationship between Governor Gordon Obaseki and his now uh, deputy, erstwhile deputy, Philip Shaibo. I mean, what do you make of it, especially because they were together in the heat, you know, of that battle where uh, uh, Gordon Obaseki was denied the ticket of the APC? Yes, uh, and uh, uh, thank you so much for having me again. I really appreciate the uh, the confidence. But let's uh, let's be frank, okay? Uh, even the legal ultimately is driven by the politics at the end of the day. Uh, and I'm very surprised and shocked that this is happening because uh, the governor, from what I could see, has been very loyal to this man. Remember when they were moving from one party to the other, right? Typically, you will negotiate with the other party where the, uh, the place you are going, they will either give you the PDP, uh, the deputy governor team. He insisted, remember the drama where he says, is either me and my governor or nothing. And uh, uh, Shwaibu is one of the most uh, visible deputy governors that I know of in terms of the kind of authority he's been given. So I was surprised at this development. And I think it comes down to human nature where people often forget, okay, their position or their role in any scenario. The deputy governor is not in any, by any means even close to the governor. The deputy governor is barely above a commissioner under Nigerian constitution. So when you start to carry yourself as if you are almost having uh, the same power with your governor, or you don't care about the politics or the uh, 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 where your governor is going, you are going to end up where you where you where you where you ended up. With all due respect, I don't know both of them personally, but my point is, I think this all comes down to human ego, a lack of a, 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 a appreciation of the power dynamics. Okay, because when you start, uh, 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 let's call it spade a spade. The governor has telegraphed the, his choice of a successor. And you then come out and say you want to run as, as governor. Basically, you are opposing <laughs> your boss. And over and over again, we see this happening. And this became an inevitability at the time he decided to take them to court first. And they ultimately uh, lost that. That's what I see. It's a, it's a clash of personalities, but that's not even right. You can't have clash of personalities with your boss. You're going to lose. You have clash of ideas of personality with people of equal level. And the governor just showed him that we are not mates. And that is the politics of it. Let's just call it what it is. At least in my own opinion. Mm. Okay, so two things I can actually bring out from what you just said. I mean, the first thing is that you equated the office of the deputy governor to that of a commissioner. Um, would that be right constitutionally, you know, considering that if anything happens to the governor today, um, it is the deputy governor who takes over? And then number two, you also talked about the fact that he was going to run against the wish of, of his uh, governor. Um, is it such a bad idea for, for one to have an ambi ambition? No, it's not a bad idea, but if you are naive, but if you are a savvy po a political operator, you will know that it's a suicide mission unless you are really sure that you've got the power to go after against the wishes of your governor while you are still his deputy. Now, coming back to the issue of power, let's be frank, it's a constitutional problem. I get it, but the constitution that we are operating right now, go and look at section 193 that listed the powers of the deputy governor, for instance. It was never mentioned in isolation. Basically, he has no powers. You will hear the governor, okay, along with his deputy governor and commissioners. All the powers of, govern of the deputy governor were mentioned in the context of commissioners too. So yes, 
is Primus in Taparis, in my own opinion. The deputy governor, that's why I say, slightly higher than the commissioner, because he's the one that is designated uh, constitutionally to, uh, to, uh, um, uh, to succeed the governor if he dies or he, he falls sick and all that. So to that extent, he's a bit higher than commissioner, but he has no other power other than that, that is higher than that of a commissioner or the one that is given by the governor. And you're a human being with all due respect. If I'm the governor and I have a deputy governor that decides to buck my will while we are still running, I'll crush him. It's just the way it is. And the constitution allows you to do that. There is nothing wrong with ambition. Let's be frank. When this thing started developing, those of us who make public com uh, commentary, I try to do some investigation to find out what's going on. Why is Shuaibu now all of a sudden fighting his governor because they are very close, they are, they, they are five and six. Then I, I, I found out that the governor had already telegraphed who he was going to be supporting before Shuaibu showed interest in being a governor. And he never, and again, I may be proved wrong from what I understand, Shuaibu never informed his governor that he wants to be a, a governor himself or that he wants to succeed him. Where is that done? Now, if you, as my deputy governor, you want to run to succeed me, don't you think we are just, this is not even just African thing. Even in America, you will have to talk with your governor first. Get his buy-in. Because you know how powerful he is. You know every governor will have an interest on who's going to succeed them. He should have been making his move years ago. But from what I understood, and I could be proved wrong, I wasn't there. I, 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 I don't know the full facts. But from my understanding, the governor already telegraphed before he showed interest. And at that point, it was too late. But he never, let's even assume that he has ambition. And he expects the governor to support him because he has supported the governor for so many years. That's legit. But shouldn't he go and make a formal, or at least let the governor know? Then let the governor say, I'm not supporting you. That way, he will have mouth to talk. But if you never want to meet the governor because you, 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 you already assumed that he's not going to support you, then it's on you. Let's be frank. You can have ambition. Nobody is saying you should have ambition. But like they say in Yoruba language, I don't, I don't want to speak to you, but they say, and let me just say it for those who can translate. They say, something like that. In other words, if you don't have the muzzle financially, politically, to buck somebody who is higher than you in the political hierarchy, are they just going to deal with you? Go and ask uh, 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 Oshibaju. Okay, Oshibaju didn't go against Buhari, right? But he went against his own political godfather that he knew was going to be a president, wants to be a president for many years. And he doesn't have the political base to do that. He didn't have the political base. He didn't have the political power. He doesn't have the aggression or ruthlessness to go after Jagaban. So they crushed him. Same way, Ladoja did the same thing in his, in his, but, 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 in his own Dr. case. Dr. Fair, yes, if, if I may quickly later. come in yeah. here, um, you, you seem to, to think or believe that it is how um, Philip Shaibu conducted himself in office that led to you know, where he is today, and you know, almost as though you are justifying it. Uh, let's assume that because there are speculations that he actually did, or reports that he actually did tell the governor about his ambition, and that you know, from the very beginning, the governor had said no. But is that enough grounds you know, for, for all the drama and controversy that we've seen? It's either, <laughs> you, it's either you support or you don't support. And business, as usual, can, can go on. Can, can it not? Now, I'm not here to, to defend the governor, OK? I'm not going to say I'm even part of their party or part of what they do. I've never been to a do state since they became governor. But my point is, we are all living in the real world. Yes, it is. Somebody should have ambition. I have nothing, nothing wrong against that. But you are talking politics. In politics, you try to, 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 to cut the powers of somebody who's about to oppose your will. It is what it is. I'm not endorsing it. I'm not saying it's OK. But I'm just saying you'll be naive to, to cut that out. Ambition alone is not enough in politics. You have to play the game. Why did Peter B not win? I'm a Peter B guy. Everybody knows that. But why did he not win? You have to cut the relationships that will give you the power. It's not enough for you to be good. It's not enough for you to be intelligent. You have to cut the power base, the people that can help you achieve your objective. And when you don't do that, you lose. So if he wants to be governor and he's not getting the buy-in of his governor, if I were him, I would have negotiated 
with the governor that, okay, daddy, I know I cannot go now. After as a young man, right? He's much younger than the governor. Say, okay, I know that you have your choice, but I've been with you for eight years. Give me some guarantees with this, your choice, that when he gets in, I'm going to get this. That's the best he could hope for. Even the great Jagaban, when it was clear that I cannot run for VP, all he can do is negotiate with Buhari now to nominate who's going to be the VP. That's politics. Politics is not for the saints. So ambition is good, but those who are going to help you actualize the ambition, if you antagonize them, you die. It's the way it is. You can't, especially governorship level, at least until they change the constitution, which I think is, makes the government all too powerful, and that's why we're dealing with this. But I deal with reality as a commentator, I don't deal with emotion. If you want to run for governor as a deputy governor, and you don't have the buy-in of your sitting governor, you really, really have, some have done it, but 70% of the time, you don't even get to leave to run for that election. That's why they just show you now. Now, yeah, you think you have power now because you've made some money, because you have done all of this, but you won't even be there to run. And the governor played this card. Do I think the governor is right? Or wrong, I'm not making a judgment, but it's politics, and I'm not a hypocrite. If I'm a governor and I've decided this is the person I think I'm going to support for one reason or the other to succeed me, and you that you work in my in my in my government now decide that you want to buck that person, then I'm not gonna wait for you to come and defeat me at the election time if I can take you out early enough. So I think if I'm gonna call a spade a spade, that is what happened. And unfortunately for Shuaibu, we have a constitution where the National Assembly don't even need to prove anything specific because our constitution did not define what is misconduct. Mm -hmm. So it is and, whatever. And, and I, I, that's where I'm, I'm actually going next. Um, the, the, okay. Because you've, you've touched on the constitution. And let's talk about the, the, the report of the panel. According to the report of the panel, the, the major reason upon which Mr. Shaibo was impeached is disclosure of government secrets. Um, is this sufficient? And, and you've already started talking about what the Constitution says about the grounds of impeachment. But is this sufficient? Yes. yes now let's talk law, right? The, 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 the uh, Section 188 of the Nigerian Constitution is very clear on the procedure for removing a governor or deputy governor. For whatever reason, the drafters of the Constitution they have more or less made the decision to impeach somebody, a, a, to impeach the deputy governor, a political decision, not a legal one. Because it just says they can remove him for anything. This is important that they consider to be misconduct. And there was no definition of what is a misconduct. So if that ground in which case they are saying it, dis uh, it disclosed public information or whatever, or whatever reason, like the one they gave. If in the opinion of two-thirds of the majority of the state house, that constitutes misconduct, then that's what constitutes misconduct. The court cannot even review that, so that you understand. Legally, the court can review whether they followed the eight or nine processes under Section 188. If they didn't follow all those eight processes, then the court will review and probably restore him like they did for Ladoja and uh, uh, Peter Obi when he was removed as governor. But the court did not look into whether what he did constitute misconduct or not. The court cannot do that. Section 10 of Section 188 made that very clear. The court can, and the Supreme Court has even ruled on that, that the court cannot look into what exactly constitutes misconduct or not. What the court can do is to review whether they followed all the processes as listed in Section 188. So Shuaibu's salvation now is to go gather his lawyers, then they'll look at the fine print of section 188 versus uh, 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 subsections 1 to 10. And if there's any of them that they, they, they did not follow, then he may win in court. But if they followed all those nine steps, tough luck. It is what it is, and I'm talking legal now. All right, unless you can show me there's any part in the constitution that defined what exactly is misconduct. And there's not. Unfortunately, and that's why we need to amend the Constitution. I think that leaving it vague has now made it possible for governors to remove their deputies for frivolous reasons, and legally too. Now, I'm not saying this is frivolous. I'm not making any professional judgment on the reason. But you and I know the reason, whatever it is they are calling. And 
as human nature and as politics is concerned, okay, you can't discount that. Politics is not legal. Politics is human relationship. Politics is success of power. You don't have enough power. If you had the control of the nation of the state assembly, maybe you had majority control. And then he ha that means he has the power to resist being impeached. Then he can go after his governor. It's been done before, but if he doesn't have that, which obviously he didn't, because they got 18 people out of 24 to impeach him when they needed only 16 or so. So obviously he didn't do his own work. And he just didn't want to do gra gra and be fighting his governor. It's a Jacqueline here. I'm, I'm sorry. I don't know both of them. I know some people in the Edo government. I'm not going to give you, a, I'm not the hypocrite, and I'm not going to tell you I don't know anybody in the Edo state government. I do, but I've never talked to them about this before all of this happened. I don't know. I didn't even know they were impeaching the guy until a few days ago. So to me, it's, a, it's an issue of him not understanding the politics that he has found himself or thinking. As and, always and, and Dr. Okbe, interesting, yes. you, you mentioned the politics, and you also mentioned how he did not do his homework um, in the State House of Assembly. Um, some would yes. say that the State Houses of Assembly uh, you know, are sometimes a, a tool in the hands of, of governors to settle political scores. You know, constitutionally, um, in, in this kind of situation, what is the actual role of the State House of Assembly um, in, in impeachment processes? No, it's a very, their, their, their role constitutionally, going back to legal now, is very clear. Section 188 is very clear, unless Shuaibu is saying they did not follow the process in Section 180, it's very clear. How does it get start, started? In Section 2 of Section 188, is that whenever a notice of any allegation in writing signed by not less than one third even, one third of the members of the National Assembly, stating that the, the, the deputy governor is guilty of gross misconduct in the performance of the duties of his office. What, that's how it starts. A one third of the, it does say it's 24 people. That means eight people signed in writing that this man is guilty of, of misconduct. And that misconduct is not defined. They, can, they will give details in his own case. They said they disclose a, 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 a official government information to the public. If that really happened, that's a misconduct by any standard. In fact, it's going towards espionage. But when you leak state secrets to people outside, you are flirting with espionage on, at the global level. So they gave their reason, which is all they are required to do by law. Now, whether those reasons are valid, the state assembly does not have power to examine that before then they then appoint a panel uh, through the, uh, uh, the, the, the chief judge. So the procedure allows them to do that. So when you are saying, uh, that does the state assembly have any power here? They received a letter from what I had, signed by more than eight people, saying that this man is guilty of a misconduct. That starts the process right there. And the, 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 even the, the section, let me look for it now. It says, it says within seven days of getting that letter, all right, then they will serve it on the order of that position that they want to uh, 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 they want to impeach, whether they have debated or not. They are not even required by the constitution. It's crazy to debate the legitimacy of the uh, or rather the the allegations. They are not allowed to debate that. If they don't want to, it's right there. The next thing that happens is then within fourteen days out of that, they, then. They will, they, will, uh, 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 they, they will write to the governor, uh, the chief judge to appoint a panel to look into the allegations. And that is where stories can start. So when the panel is appointed, then everybody is allowed to come there and say what they have to say. The deputy governor will be notified. He can go there and go and write a statement or give evidence or whatever he needs to do. Then the panel mm -hmm. will then decide whether misconduct has been proved or not, right. or not proved. D D right? D D D well, allow me to yeah. put you on hold. Um, we'll explore this further, especially the role of the State Houses of Assembly um, in just okay. a moment when Politics Tonight returns. Stay with us, everyone. Us. So just before that break, you were talking about or, or giving us details uh, you know, as to the provisions of the Constitution um, in, of, you know, on the impeachment process. You've touched on constituting a panel 
Um, I think that's where you stop, stopped. I want to be sure that you've exhausted that before I move on um, to ask you further uh, questions. Yes, I was saying that once they get that letter that is signed by one third of the people saying somebody, uh, the deputy governor is guilty of a misconduct, then the notice will be sat on the deputy governor uh, within seven days, and then within 14 days of that, then the state assembly will pass a resolution by motion without debate. That's what section three, uh, uh, 188 subsection 3 says. They won't even need to debate it as long as uh, uh, um, two third people sign it for it to be investigated. In other words, they will not debate whether it should be investigated or not. They will only vote. And once they get two thirds of majority to say, let's go investigate this allegation, then it is carried. Then after that, within seven days after that, then the uh, the uh, the um, the chief judge, okay, at the request of the speaker. In other words, the speaker will request the chief judge to appoint seven persons, in his opinion, who are of unquestionable integrity, not being members of the public service or legislative house, to investigate the allegation. In other words, seven people who are not legislators, who are of integrity will be appointed by the chief judge to investigate the matter. So that it's not just even the, national, uh, the state assembly that is dealing with this guy now. You have these seven people who will be appointed, and then the, the panel will then have powers within three months of the appointment to report their finding back. They will hold, hold the hearings. They will invite the deputy governor. They will invite anybody who wants to give evidence. Now, if the deputy governor doesn't go, that's his own problem. The, the law allows them to continue. Now, if the panel so decides in, that the in this allegation particular of case, misconduct... Dr. Tokbe, the, the deputy governor did not go. Um, I, I want Sorry? to, again, in this particular case, the, the deputy yes. governor did not appear before the, the panel. Um, can yes. they proceed then without his appearance before the panel? 100%. They can proceed as long as they have served him notice. So if you say they never served me, that's a whole different problem. And then... He may get his job back when they go to court, but they served it on him, and he chose of his own will not to show up. Well, he's the one that slept on his right. The law is clear. The constitution is clear. Even if he didn't make a statement, nobody cares as long as you are notified. That's what the law says. So when the panel comes back and says that the allegation has been proved has not been proved, it dies there. The state assembly cannot go ahead and impeach him, so that you understand that there is checks and balance even as the power appears weighted in favor of the state assembly, there's checks and balance. There's a panel, independent panel, who will sit. If they come back and say this thing is not proved, that's the end of the matter. Sorry, again, but Dr. Come Claire, back, I, yes. I, I want to come in here because you mentioned check and balance. Is there really check and balance? Because again, I'm referring to the, your earlier statement, um, because it's a very weighty statement where you said the deputy governor did not do his homework. Um, that's a very strong statement. It's political, which is what a lot of people would do. It's like <laughs> lobbying. Just a minute, it's like lobbying and, and doing your homework. It, it's done around the world. But at the state level, does it not speak to the... Because we talk a lot about the separation of powers. But does it not also speak a lot about the imbalance of power uh, between the executive and the legislature? Well, I'm not going to argue with you that there is no imbalance. But... That is the problem of the constitutional writers. That's why we're asking for constitutional review. Me, as a lawyer, I'm telling you the law. I'm not telling you what should be the law. I'm telling you what is there. Even at the presidential level, when they tried to take Obasanjo out, was he not lobbying all over the place to make sure the thing dies? Everybody does that. Even in America, you have to lobby. It's politics. This has got nothing to do with separation of power. But in this case, like I said, there's checks and balance because the panel that will investigate the allegations of the state assembly is appointed by the chief judge. That's checks and balance right there, so that the state assembly is not a judge in his own cause. They are the ones making the allegation. Remember, not even the governor. It's the eight people minimum in the state house that made the allegation that this man is guilty of misconduct. Governor has no part to play here, other than, of course, to press button behind the scenes. But he has no role in the impeachment. So don't blame Abbasaki in this matter. Blame the national, the state assembly. What I'm saying is that when they have decided to accuse the deputy governor of gross misconduct, the constitution provides for the chief judge to appoint seven independent-minded people. 
that does not include that does not include legislators. And when those people have not been empaneled, it is for you to go there and make your case. Because if they say the case is not proven, it dies. So he didn't do his own work at the state level. When the panel was appointed, there are only seven. He can't make moves. He can't lobby. Yeah, you got to lobby in anything. Even in church, to be appointed, a, a, to be ordained a pastor, you have to lobby because there are too many people who are willing to be ordained. I know I used to be a pastor of Redeemed Church. What are you talking about? Even though you want to do God's work, they're not going to ordain everybody who wants to be a, a pastor. So you better be good with your provincial pastor. You better be good with those who are submitting nominations or you're not going. It's human nature. See, to me, it, it, the deputy governor, if you understood the law, if you understood this constitution, there are many pressure points before you decide you're going to confront your governor. It's either the chief judge is your party who's going to block everything or appoint people that will be in your favor. Did he make the moves to do that? If I'm deputy governor, before I go to war, that's what I'll do because I know the pressure points. The chief judge is probably the most important, not even the legislators. Trust me. Legislators can get you to be investigated. But if the panel says allegation is not proved, even if all 24 legislators want to be impeached, then you are not going to be impeached. So a smart politician will see that the real power, when this thing is going on, is with the chief judge. I will have been cultivating the chief judge for the last three years. Or immediately I hear that it's a problem. That's the place I will go. Who knows? Chief judge, who did this to make my case, not to bribe the chief judge, especially if I feel that I'm being dealt with unfairly. Make your case behind the scenes first, so that when they are appointing those seven people, those are the most important people in the impeachment process, those seven people on the panel, because according to the Constitution, if they come out with their report and say it is not proved, it cannot go back to the state house for them to be voting on, on rubbish. Impeachment dies right there. And if they say it is proven, then you're done. Because before they got the case, you already have to thoughts who have approved it, unless you have bought over a, 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 a work out a deal with some of that majority to make sure that they don't get to thoughts again when they need to vote on the report. They, they, so there's checks and balance. It's not as if the governor said, I don't like you, so I'm going to fire you. The governor did not fire him. The governor cannot fire deputy, deputy governor. Obasaki may not like this guy. Obasaki cannot fire him. So that's a check there. State assembly, representatives of the people, are the ones who make the allegation. So, and when they make the allegation, they are the ones also voting on the, on the, the report of the panel. That's also another check, and it's two thirds. 16 out of 24 that is required. So if 16 representatives out of the representatives of the people, out of 24, say you need to be impeached, then you deserve to be impeached. The people just impeached you, not the governor. Even if you think you are not guilty, you are representing the people. Representatives of the people just said you need but, to but go. In, in states, have, have for example, Dr. Kbe, where you have yeah. off-cycle yeah. elections, uh, for example, maybe the governor had been appointed before, uh, or had been elected rather, before the, the election of the of the um, state houses, members of the state houses of assembly, sometimes getting to those tickets is at the behest of the governor, and so your loyalty lies with the governor. Um, let's look at what has happened in Ondoa Rivers, for example. Um, would you still say that, look, there is check and balance in the system, and that the system can be skewed in the favor of the deputy governor? Uh, well, I would say there is check and balance because you are the problem many people have, and I know that a lot of people will be dragging me right now for saying it the way it is, is a deputy governor trying to equate himself with a governor. That is the problem. The minute a deputy governor understands that, I, yes, I ran with the guy, yes, they voted for us together, but that by constitution, I'm really holding my position at the, at the will, so to speak, of the governor. They won't have a problem. You, if you have a deputy president, a, a managing director in your company that has no powers of their own, and they choose that and they, don't, they, they, they don't control the board. You control the board, or you have more influence with the board. If they come after you, they lose unless they've already gone to convince shareholders that they deserve to be president now. In which case, in our own case, is the state assembly. 
Obviously, Shuaibu has not done that. Because if he did that, he would never have been impeached. So I disagree with those who are thinking it is good against deputy governor. Because you are thinking deputy governor has the same right as a governor. He does not. Our constitution says so. It's like, other than being succeeding the governor, I'm telling you, you could go check the section 193, the Deputy governor does not have more powers than a commissioner. That's the constitution you are running. Other than him being able to succeed the governor or to act for the governor when the governor is not there. Those are the two extra powers he has. But everything else is almost equivalent to a commissioner. Will a commissioner now say he wants to oppose what his governor said? Unless, of course, it's a strong commissioner who has tied up the chief judge or who has representatives of the people liking it more than the governor. Because you know some governors are unpopular, right? Where the state assembly are really for its deputy governor. In that case, then you can declare war. You know what they say? If you are going to declare war on the dawn, you better win. Because if you don't win, you're done. Are you hearing of Oshibaju today? Hmm. You go after your godfather. Right, so I, I, I want to talk about... Yes. I want to talk about the, the several impeachment you know, we've seen reversed by the court. Um, for example, um, we've seen several impeachments reversed by the court. We've seen that of yes. the former deputy governor of, of Zamfara State, Madi Guso, who that was reversed. Uh, but that was reversed after you know, they had left office. But what does this say about the, the legislative over oversight uh, of impeachment and integrity of, of, of that process? Are you talking about judiciary oversight? Because no, it's legislative, that is I said legislative oversight. There is no legislative oversight because legislature is the one doing the impeachment now. They are the ones that need to be over, overseen. It, it is not the governor that is doing the impeachment, my sister. It is the legislature. So there is no oversight because they are the ones doing the action. You talk about oversight of a higher I, I, body. I, I, or a and I get body. that you say it's not the governor, but you know, sometimes I, I know you're speaking legally. Uh, but there is also the politics of it. Uh, and sometimes, yes. you know, this, 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 uh, this impeachment process usually begins the minute the governor starts to have issues with the, yes. with the, with the deputy governor. We've mostly never seen um, the House of Assembly get up on its own to say, oh, we do not like the, de we don't think that the deputy governor is doing well. It's the minute that the governor starts to have issues with the deputy governor um, that the proceedings begin. And so that's why perhaps I call it legislative oversight. But l let's go with the legal terms. But what do you think no, that no. it's the integrity of that process if sometimes the court has to then reverse the impeachment? Oh, yes, the court can reverse imp uh, impeachment as, uh, as long as they did not follow the provisions of Section 188. In other words, the only grounds, the, 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 the ones that have been restored from Ladoja to Peter Obi to Daz Zamfara, it's always because the legislature did not follow procedure. So you can say the judiciary is the oversight for the legislature in the improvement impeachment process. But because our section 188, subsection 10, has said that nobody, no, no court can review their actions once they've taken it. What the Supreme Court have then decided is that, yeah, we are not able to tell you whether to go ahead and impeach or not impeach. But once we have done the impeachment, we will look at the provisions of the law. They do follow it, and they can do that. And everyone that has been reversed is based on that ground. Unfortunately for Shuaibu now, because of timing, I don't think he's going to get his job back, even if he wins, before the next election. This is politics, 100%. There is an oversight, by the way, in the legislature, since you mentioned that. Let me quickly say that. Because the rules require two-thirds majority. What oversight can be bigger than that? If two-thirds of the representatives of the people decided that you, as a deputy governor, must go, are you saying you should not go? What oversight are you looking for? He's not, he's not being impeached because the governor said impeach him. He's not being impeached because two people say they don't like him, or nine people, or ten people. The constitution says two-thirds of the representatives of the people. And two-thirds voted, 18 of them, even two more than the required, voted to take a Shuaibu. To me, there's oversight in the legislature, there's oversight of the judiciary. The only thing is that they cannot prevent a legislator from taking action. Now that they've taken action, Schwab can go to court. And good luck to him if he can prove that he didn't follow procedure. But he cannot say I didn't do professional misconduct, is what I'm trying to tell you. That one is not going to be justiciable. 
The panel has voted. The panel has said there is misconduct. End of the matter. But like in uh, a lot of that case, where they did the meeting in a private place instead of the place uh, uh, allocated for National Assembly, that's a violation of the due process. So it was restored. In the same way, in uh, 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 Peter B's case, they did the vote to remove him in the middle of the night when it's not the normal time for the state assembly to be sitting. And the, the government, the, the court said, no, you cannot do that. That is not in the constitution. So I don't know the ground he can use. There are eight grounds, there are nine. So he can go under one sec section 188, get his lawyers to review it thoroughly, and be sure that one of those sections was not followed. And then he will have a case, otherwise he's just going to pay the sons a lot of millions of naira, and it's still going to lose it. It's just the way it is. The law is clear. It's not fair. It's not right. It's why we are saying they should change the constitution. But we are dealing with the reality on ground, not what should be. Lawyers who know their, their law, they don't talk about what should be when you are telling them to analyze the case. They tell you about what it is. So I think Shuaibu is a victim of his own hubris. You went and confronted your governor when you don't have the, the backup to win the fight. You don't have... Uh, uh, the members of the state house who will make sure the thing never goes to any votes, or if it goes to vote, it is defeated. That is the only work he didn't do. And then when it comes to war, you don't have a war chest like the governor. Governor has a lot of pressure points. Let's face it. Now we are at war. The governor but, but, will be but a doesn't close this room. also this speak, Doctor Kbert, to to the ability of the governor to also forgive? Because we saw um, Philip Shaibu has several, at least some cases, extend a hand to the governor at public events. He made a public apology. Um, there were attempts by some people to wade into, into this particular issue, but every attempt was rebuffed by the governor. I, I, I don't know the details, but let me tell you this. Shuaibu himself will agree is the most visible deputy governor in Nigeria. If I were to ask you as I'm talking to you now, name three deputy governors of states in Nigeria. I doubt if you can name three, but everybody knows Philip Shuaibu. You know why? Because he was given a lot of visibility by his governor, which is unusual. Did you know that this tribal guy is the one that uh, superintended the National Sports Festival, where over $22 billion was spent? He was the one that did all the appointments, did all the contract awards. He's been given a lot of visibility by his governor. Local governments were all under him. And he was the one superintending them for the governor. So he has a lot of powers. Most governors do not empower their deputy governors. This particular deputy governor was very empowered. But somehow, maybe his youth, I hear he's just about early 50s or whatever, or maybe he's just a, a, a pride or overconfidence, then thinking, because you have made some money now, you can go after a sitting governor when you are deputy. It's not done. My sister, let's be frank. Let's be right. This is politics. They are not there because they are pastors. They are not there because they are judges. They are there because they are politicians. So you have to play the politics if you want to survive. You don't play the politics, they bury you. And there will be no sympathy. I don't have a sympathy mm. for him. No, I don't. Because if, you, just, if I'm governor, quickly, I know exactly what I'm going to do. Just the quickly, law is on my side. Mm, Dr. Yeah. Okbe, just quickly, yeah. as we begin to wind down the conversation, uh, many have described yes. um, Shaibu as a grassroots politician um, upon whose sagacity was the wind of, uh, uh, that Gordon Obasaki came to office. Uh, what he, he has also fallen out with his former friend, I, I would say, for the former national uh, chairman of his party, of his then party, Adam Soshomole. What do you think lies ahead for him now? Well, uh, unless he can mend fences quickly, I would advise him not to even bother going to court. He's not going to get that position back before the time is over. If he doesn't want to go into political oblivion, he will need to go make nice with, with, uh, with Obasek. And I say that with all sense of response. If... Even the, the man you just mentioned, uh, Oshia Mole himself, if he can be taken out because he happens to fall out with the those so in the so-called cabal of Buhari, who is Shuaibu? So he needs, if he really wants to survive politically, Elaiti Lord, this one is gone. He needs to make peace, he needs to make nice with his current governor. Then maybe they can negotiate for him to be relevant in the next administration if they win. That would be my sincere advice from his friend. I'm not going to waste money on court process at this point. It's counterproductive. Not only will you not, may you not win before the time, this is less than six months to election. You don't think Nigerian sons will delay the case where the team will not have head or tail before then. So if you continue to antagonize, what will happen is they will continue to cut your legs. They continue to cut your 
yourself. Before, I think he believed he has the grassroots. But the grassroots is represented in the state assembly. The grassroots does not come to vote. Now it's been shown that it doesn't have the grassroots. Because if it does, there is no reason why they will have gotten 18 people to vote against him. He thought he has the grassroots because the governor was with him. And to be honest, and this will be like maybe the only chance I have to say this so that Shaibu can get it. Obasaki was very loyal to this guy, at least when the going was good. I've never seen where a governor and deputy governor cross parties and they're able to retain the governorship and the deputy governor. And I remember then Obasaki being very vocal and saying, we are not going to concede deputy governorship to PDP. Why? It's either you take us as a team or we are not coming. That is extreme loyalty from the part of Obasaki, in my opinion, because governors have no conscience, most of them. When it comes to time to negotiate, to get power, they will right. throw you under the bus in a minute. But Obasaki did not do that at that time. Now, I'm, mm. I don't know what caused this current fight, but if the way I've been, and it was, uh, the way it was so empowered as a deputy governor, more than right. any other deputy governor in Nigeria, so for them to have fallen apart, something major must have happened. Well, and if it is this ambition mm. that he's talking about, he's wrong. You cannot have a, an ambition. There is a new deputy governor now. Um, I mean, yes. just few few months All to the end of that tenure. Yes, we'll yes, see yes. how things play out in a dose state. We're following political developments there. Thank you so much for your time and your analysis tonight, Dr. Kwebao, a lawyer, public Thank affairs so analyst, and the founder of Niger Lives Matter. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. And that marks the end of today's episode of Politics Tonight. But the conversation continues from here. Get in touch with us on Twitter at TVC News NG. And then you can also follow, uh, check, get in touch with us on Insta Instagram as well. Twitter is now X, Instagram also at TVC News NG. And on YouTube, uh, we're live at uh, TVC News Nigeria. Thanks for watching. I am Precious Amayu.